Welcome back YouTubers, Steve Byrne here and in this episode of the Salzburg Saga we're going to find out if we manage to get to the knockout stages of the Champions League. We're back with episode 2 of the Salzburg Saga. Now in episode 1 we found out that we were running away with the league, we would pretty much won every game except one which we just drew and we'd also had our foot still in a good position in the Champions League. But first of all, I think the first thing I want to do is find ourselves a home in the city of beautiful Salzburg. After hunting up and down the city, I've finally settled on this beautiful home here, which is where I'm going to live while managing Salzburg. Obviously, not in real life. That would be a dream come true. If you are enjoying this kind of content, then please don't forget to smash that subscribe button, like this video, and comment what you'd like to see in the episodes ahead. So, without further delay, let's take a look at the fixtures for episode 2. We played 4 league games and 3 Champions League games. Our first game was against S3 Reed, where we recorded a comfortable 3-0 victory with goals coming from Sami Nasri and Dominic Shabazlai. Let's take a look at the goals. So Nasri makes this 1-0 with Shabazlai and Orma linking up before Subazlai plays a through ball to Nasri, who tugs it in to the bottom left hand corner. That's 1 0. The second goal also came from Samir Nasri. Zobnin plays it to Samir Nasri on the left, who has a bit of space and puts it behind the goalkeeper to make it 2 0. And lastly, Subazlai, with this beautiful free kick curled around the wall, too far for the keeper to get. We win this game 3 0. Next up, we hosted Club Rouge. Now, we were really hoping to get a victory in this game because that would kept our Europa League dreams alive by finishing third. However, that wasn't quite to be as we lost 1-0 at home to Club Rouge. Let's take a look at Vanneken's goal. So here they go on the attack. Subol finds Diata who crosses it back in and Vanneken heads it and that is the goal that puts us in deep trouble in the Champions League. Confidence seems to be running low in the camp of Salzburg as we then are away to LASK and we lose 1-0 once again. Let's take a look at Raguz's goal. So Renner goes down the wing. Going to put a cross in I assume. Gets it in. Raguz on the half volley. Smashes it past Stankovic. LASK win. 1-0. Next up is a very hard match at Old Trafford against Manchester United. We lose this game 3-0. We were trying to keep Cavani quiet. We managed to achieve that because he scored four goals in the last fixture that beat us 4-0 in Salzburg. But let's have a look at Manchester United's goals. So Fernandez finds Cavani who has the shot deflected and then Tellez crosses it in from the wing to the back post, Marshall just tucks it into the bottom right hand corner, 1-0 to United. It didn't take too much longer before United extended their lead with Marcus Rashford adding another goal for the Red Devils, 2-0. Nearly a third of the way into the second half, Marcus Rashford grabs his second to make it 3-0 to Manchester United. In the next league fixture, we host TSV Hartberg. We managed to get back to winning ways with goals from Pato and Dakar. Let's have a look at the goals. In the 61st minute, TSV Hartberg take the lead with this beautiful goal from Leinhardt. Their lead lasted 17 minutes until the 78th minute when Alexandra Pato equalises for Salzburg. Curls it to the right hand corner. Beautiful goal Pato. Nice. A little less than five minutes afterwards, Pats and Dakar makes it 2 1 to Salzburg. And just to secure the three points in the 93rd minute, this happened from Alexandra Pato. Now we host Juventus in the final group stage game of the Champions League. We only need a point to finish third as long as Manchester United defeat Club Bruges. So there wasn't many highlights to show in this game. As we can see, it's a nil-nil result. So with that being said, let's go and take a look what happened in the Manchester United 
versus Club Bruges game. Great news received for Salzburg fans as we've just found out that Manchester United have taken the lead in Belgium with Martial on the volley, sweetly struck past Mignolet. As it stands, Salzburg are going to the Europa League. Six minutes left in the United game. Club Bruges have equalised. This means Salzburg will be finishing fourth in their group and not qualifying for the Europa League knockout stages. And as we can see, that game finished 1-1, which means we've finished bottom of our Champions League group in a very tough and tricky group. In our final game of this episode, we take on SKN St. Poulton, who are bottom of the league. We win this game 4-1. Dakar lets himself a hat-trick, and Alexandre Pato adds another to his tally. Let's take a look at the goals. Just under a quarter of an hour of the game gone, Pats and Dakar makes it 1-0 to Salzburg. Forty-one minutes played. Patson Dakar then doubles the lead with his second goal of the game. Three minutes into the second half, Patson Dakar then completes his hat trick, making it three 0 to Red Bull Salzburg. Finally finished into the top right hand corner. Fifteen minutes left to go into the full time whistle. Alexander Pato makes it four. In the 79th minute, St. Poulton grabs them, grab themselves nothing more than a consolation goal. Kruzarek makes it 4-1. So as we can see here, that was our last seven fixtures, starting from the SV Reed game. So it was a 3-0 win. We then lost 1-0 at home to Bruges, followed by another loss to LASK. Then we lost 3-0 at Old Trafford. Then we won 3-1 against Hartberg. Drew 0-0 with Juventus, which was a great result, my I add. But Man United could not beat Club Bruges, which didn't do us any big favours at all. And we finish off this episode with a nice 4-1 victory against St. Poulton. So let's have a look at the league and see how many points we have. So as we can see, we are currently top with 28 points. We are 7 points clear from Austria Vienna and also have a game in hand. Now, Wolfsburger do have a game in hand on us. So if they got a win, that'd be 23. That'd be 5 points clear of us, behind us, should I say. But as things stands, we're doing quite comfortable. So we played 11, won 9, drawn 1 and also lost 1. Scored 26 goals, only conceded 7 with a massive goal difference of plus 19 when the teams around us have nowhere near that level of goal scoring threat at the moment a quick look at the goal scoring charts in the league we can see that Pats and Dakar is the leading goal scorer our Zambian has eight goals then Pato sits joint second with five goals and then we've also got Roman Zobnin with the most assists in the league with five and then Joint fifth is Sami Nasri and Dominic Subaslai with two assists each. During those games, we did get a couple of injuries which have knocked us back just a little bit. We can see here, Dao Yanmat is receiving treatment and is expected to be out to four to five weeks. And Smith Rowe had only just returned from an injury. We had him on the bench for two games in a row. He played no more than 15 minutes in each game. And in the second game, picked up another injury, I believe. He is out for eight days to three weeks. So our next five games in the league, because we're not in the Champions League anymore, will be a home tie against Altac. We're then away to Sturm Graz. Then away to FCN Nuremberg, which is a friendly, may, may I add, I've just realised. Then we're home to Admira Wacker Modlin and away to Austria Vienna in the month of January. If you enjoyed this content then please do smash that subscribe button, like the video and comment below if there's anything else you would like to see during this save. Thank you once again, I'll see you on the next episode.